sporting a new stream, we need, we need speakers. So there you go. Especially the ladies. Okay, we're taking questions and answers. Uh, sorry, we're taking questions. <laughs> we're taking questions from the answer floor. Answer is 42. And uh, Walter. Uh, question for the tester guy. Have you done anything with the automated uh, GUI testing? Like yes. Have, like, tools like, yes. Um, record whatever it is you're doing? Yep. Just now, remember I talked about the um, bloating regression okay. test. Okay, regression test, I would suggest to use the uh, automated testing. We, there are main tools out there that cost money. Um, RFT from IBM, or uh, uh, QTP, Quick Test Professional. All these are tools that you can use. Uh, they will actually interact very well with the GUI objects. Um, otherwise, you can use uh, free tools, um, Selenium. Um, you, can, you can actually find free automation tools out there, but um, there's a lot of work that needs to be done manually before you can use them really freely and reducing the maintenance work. Yeah. So, in order to do that, you need to have programming uh, basics. Also, you also need programming. Oh, no. You need to. Come in. John. Yeah, sure. Okay. Well, okay. How <laughs> do you test testing code? Code breaking stuff? Like, basically, some people have the neck code breaking code. <laughs> some people don't get it. So, how do you train those people to actually have an eye for perfection and basically break everything? Um, okay, like what you say, you're trying to break the thing. Uh, I would think that you are thinking along the line of exhaustive testing. We couldn't do that. For functional testing, mainly we will test that it works as per intended, and if it doesn't, it wouldn't crash the system. It would just pop up some error message or whatsoever. But um, similarly, if you're thinking about breaking, um, we can test it using performance testing. There's this thing called a uh, breakpoint test. We actually load the system so much that it actually fails. So we see how much user it can sustain. Uh, or even security test, you see how the system breaks. Um, is there any com any uh, any place within the code itself that they can be compromised? Well, what I'm trying to ask is not like the same sort of like basically you see a form, you don't type anything, press the button. Yep, that, that's that's one of the requirements. So you test for that. And then, what I'm, what I'm, how do you how do you train people to do that? I mean, I'm seeing a lot of people that let's say uh, don't get that kind of don't really test for that kind of. They won't go. It's like, do you have a manual? Do you have something? I think the not the there's two ways to do uh, go about doing this. One is you list down the requirement plainly exactly what it is that you expect. Then they will have to test the scenarios. Um, otherwise, you have to hire matured uh, testers. They will actually have you form up your requirements and tell you, hey, what if this happens? Can you please at least tell me what am I expecting to see here? Or uh, if you are lazy, they can tell them, this is a common sense. It's going to fail. And you should accept, expect some uh, failure message or something like that. Yep. It's either you have you form up your requirements and tell them exactly what they do, or you hire somebody who's mature enough to think for you. Can, can I add to that? Uh, if you if you really want to break something, hire people who are completely unqualified for the job description, and then give them work that's way beyond what they can accomplish, and you will break things really fast. And then tell them they gotta fix it, and they'll get better. But that's a really good recipe for break. Charlie keeps looking at me because we used to work together and I, I always tested like the weirdest combination of sequences of things and break something. <laughs> uh, and I, I remember like game game testers are also another different breed because they play games like crazy and they are the ones who find out all sorts of bizarre ways that the game developer will never figure out that you would think of you know doing certain actions and stuff. Maybe maybe that's what you're thinking like how do you cultivate a yeah. mindset like that? But I think in your field, you don't you don't really go and look for trouble, right? Do you, you do. You do. We do. We yeah. actually, actually break things on daily. So there's some creativity involved. Yes, there like, is. You would say like, okay, what would uh, what would somebody working in a, on a banking system try to do to this system, and I'm gonna try it out. And you then, hey, go oh. forward. <laughs> you go forward to the page. You go yeah. backward and try to re-enter a different value or whatsoever, and try to just screw up the whole thing. So, so the curiosity here is that you can't automate that, can you? Um, can you? Can, no. can you? Can you write like Selenium or whatever and say? Do whatever you want. <laughs> no, because, um, but actually, there is this uh, test methodology called fast test. Mm -hmm. uh, you actually just let the automate the script and let it input whatever random number that it has. It can generate and see whether the system breaks or not. But you can't really expect what uh, what is the result going to be. Uh, you just see whether the system breaks or not. And, and, and I want to just throw a curveball here, like, so where does testing fall in the lean startup methodology? Does it, does it even have a place in lean startup? Can you even afford it? 
what, what, what is the um, I think the uh, the. Uh, I mean, this for the lead startup guys. Right? <laughs> oh, the the the, the, yeah. the I remember the chart. The right hand side most would be invalidate. That would be the testing part. Mm. You test whether it's a good uh, idea or is a bad one. If it's good one, you <laughs> maintain it and improve on it. If it's a bad one, you think of something new. Yeah, so so Eric's Eric Reese's stand on yeah. that is um, testing comes. You should be doing TDD anyway. So you should be doing test driven development mm. and. Uh, and like within your, if you're actually um, following that principle, then the, the code should take care of itself. And what he's promoting is, um, you know, you should have a cross-functional team uh, to do that. But but that's really beyond the scope of Link Startup yeah. that we're talking about. What we talk about is really, you know, like I, I wanted to end the presentation with a quote from Mike Tyson, like the yeah. guy was punching the other guy's lights out. And he said like, Everybody has a plan until you get a punch in the face. Right? He's, so, he's very uh, good at breaking stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and so that's it. I, I feel like uh, that is a, a little beyond like the main startup skill that we're using. Yeah. Okay. And it would become before the, the product development process. We'd actually be, we're there to help iterate the concept before mm -hmm. it even needs to, to write any code. Okay. We, we we're trying to understand what that solution is before we. Ah, so write. as your example of buffer, right. which is just create a landing page and then people sign up for the That's thing. Right. And they just, yeah. we, have, we actually have nothing. Yeah. We just want to get your. We just want to get attention. Right. See if you're interested, and then we will <laughs> spam you and stuff. I, I mean, but don't. But you you touch on a good point. Like what we talk about is link startup on the front end, so the market side. Um, the product development side is also. It's the iteration, it's actually building it out, and that's something that we don't get to do too much at our workshop, but uh, uh, if you read Eric's book, he actually has a whole section on how do you use cross-functional team to improve your products and iterate on it. Actually, you remind me of another idea that uh, I think and Gadget and Gizmodo, somebody did it uh, on April Fool's, they, they made an advertisement for an uh, arcade box with an iPad thing, and it was totally like, fake. <laughs> But everybody's like, oh my god, shut the fuck up, give me my, you know, take my money. And like, oh, we gotta build this thing now. <laughs> that would be an idea of a lease alarm, right? Like just creating yeah. that fake product page and then everybody's like, I want, I want one, right? But yeah. yeah. So do, do it. <laughs> get, your, get your ideas out there and see what's right. interesting. Right. I, yeah. I, invented a, I invented something called a laksa sandwich a year ago. <laughs> and I, I've been laksa taking three orders. Laksa sandwich. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's brilliant. Um, <laughs> And it's exactly what it sounds like it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you yeah, taking orders, orders right now? <laughs> I'm taking orders. Okay, so this is a good test. Kickstarter, right? Run for it. Run for it. of Sandwich. <laughs> so what is it? Sandwich.com. <laughs> <laughs> I, I foolishly have not registered the domain yet. But it's basically, it's, it's taking Loxa and applying it in a, in a sandwich medium. Uh, I don't want to give away too many of the, the secrets. It's <laughs> <laughs> just, just a proprietary uh, development. So get, get some currency from the audience if it's not uh, good. Yeah, really. Well, email okay, addresses. You this. Yeah. You're, you're, you're stuck in a traffic jam, right? Oh you're late for getting home. Okay? You're, maybe if your wife's working late that night too, so she's not making dinner. You're, you don't want a company to get home, you're lazy, but you want locks up. But you're stuck in the traffic jam. Guy comes along on a bicycle. He's got a box there full of lox of sandwiches. <laughs> okay? This is perfect because you don't want to eat soup in your car. Right? <laughs> so, do you try the lox of sandwich? Do you, do you shell out for it? Yeah. It's awesome! You never tried it? He made it. He actually said he prototyped it. Yeah. I, 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 uh, I have a short list of pre orders. <laughs> What are you? Oh, my question is about startup guys. Have you guys run a startup before? before? Like, what's your background? Mm. Well, projects, yeah. startups, <laughs> multiple field projects. Early prototypes. Yeah. 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 Early, Early prototypes. prototypes. <laughs> oh, no, but, but to address your question, like, um, I, I I was a participant last year for Lean Startup. I've been with the team for the last, you know, this past year, since beginning this year. Um, and I was launching a product thinking I was doing Lean Startup. I studied Lean Startup on the blogs for two years. Uh, like, I read Eric Ries, like, it's a gospel. And, uh, um, and I thought I was doing it right. But lo and behold, I went to the workshop. I, you know, got a much better understanding of what I was doing. So basically, I launched a website called What Failed Us, focused on early prototypes, you know, failures. And uh, people shared their failure stories. and. 
um, helping each other learn from other people's mistakes, essentially. Um, and I talked to all startups people in San Francisco and New York, they're all like, oh, this is brilliant, why didn't we have this before? I went to a conference called Felcon, talked to about 200 people. <laughs> yeah, it actually exists. And uh, it's coming to Singapore, actually. Um, October. And, uh, and people are like, oh yeah, for sure, we love this. And I check my Google Analytics, I check my signups, you know, a week afterwards, like one person signed up. <laughs> okay, but everyone's gonna tell you, yes, uh, this is awesome. Like when you do customer development, everyone's gonna say, of course, I, I need this. But they really just said this to be polite. They didn't want to call your baby ugly, essentially, <laughs> right? Um, so it felt miserably. Um, uh, what I did, what I learned was that maybe there was a market, but the form in, we, in which I conceived the concept as like sort of the hacker news block role type of thing was probably not the format that people wanted. Yeah. Fail corner. So we're gonna do relationship win con. Bully con. Yeah. <laughs> Another question from the floor. No, nobody's can, got a question. Can I ask a question? Okay. <laughs> Did you seriously not know who Commander Riker was? <laughs> 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 Come on. <laughs> Set up three experiments. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could set up three experiments. Get customer feedback. I mean, you know, if you guys are just internally talking on your team, oh, we should go this way, we should go that way. I mean, how do you actually know that your customer, what your customer wants through that process? You know, that's why we're advocating getting out of the building. Your customer is going to tell you where to go, and so you guys make make the decision based upon that customer segment. And but, yeah, yeah. so to add to that, like, I think you have to, you can't pivot without holding your vision in, in mind, in the line of sight. So, I mean, um, it's, people always talk about pivot, it's an overused word, you know, like you just pivot this, pivot that, like that's great. But like, if you don't have your vision, like what you actually want to do with this customer segment, what you're trying to provide, then you can pivot all you want. It doesn't, it really doesn't matter. But if you, if you have a clear, um, if your eyes are lined up with a clear thing, value proposition you want to deliver, then you can find out, okay, how do I make small changes? Maybe it's not dog owners that I want to sell the product to. Maybe it's cat owners that really have a problem that they see. You know, so like, those are called different pivots. And then there are whole terms of like, zoom in pivot, zoom out pivot, customer segment pivot, channel pivot, lots of different pivots out there. And then you can take a look and figure out what did our previous experiment show us in terms of where we need to go next, and that's how you pivot. Yeah. So just to add to what you were saying. Yes. Uh, on that, uh, get you mentioned get out of, of the building to talk to your customers, but uh, like Ray says, uh, he talked to many people, but he still failed. So yeah. uh, because they don't want to offend you, so they say that your idea is a good idea. So uh, how do you like conquer that? Yeah, that, that, that's a great question, and I, I think it's a it's classic. Like I thought I was doing customer development in case, and well, in that case, I really wasn't. If um, so, this is um, you know something that we try to promote in our workshop, like to help you understand how to do customer development. It's not about will you have this? Will you? If I ask you anything, will you be interested in A or B? Everyone's gonna say yes. Everyone defaults to yes. So you have to kind of design your question. Um, to get a falsifiable, you know, 
No, I guess. And uh, and also, um, beyond that, like a trick, good trick to use is instead of asking a person straight up a question that you'll get a yes or no answer for, um, you should be thinking about how do I frame that question uh, so that people actually have to think about it. So like, when was the last time that you experienced this issue? And instead of saying when have you had this issue before? People always say yes, but if you ask them when, they'll probably say, oh, last, um, you know, last November or something. Then you know that they actually felt the pain because they went mm -hmm. through that thinking. Yeah. Actually, you hit a very important point. <clears throat> um, sometimes it's not about just going out there and asking your customers. Yeah. It's, it's even the, how you mm -hmm. ask the question, but what sort of questions you're asking. Yeah. Um, like a few, I, I don't think they're here, but a few startup people, uh, your audience have come up with it. So like, I wanted to pitch an idea to me, and the and, and they saw like customer feedback and so the, the questions they asked was was, was wrong. Mm -hmm. So like this this person wanted to build a food review thing. The question was like, you know, how would you like it if there's a service I can recommend you good food, for example. Right. Of that. course, awesome, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 brilliant, right? But then the details is oh, but you gotta do this and you do that and you gotta and, and you gotta do that and and, and I gotta get. Uh, a crowdsource stuff, and it'd be like you know uh, a few more, you know half a year. Yeah. And, but I need you to help me review. They're like, uh, no, thank, thank you, yeah. no, thank you. Yeah. Right? I mean, so, I mean, I I would say yeah. like, when was the last time you ordered food, right? Yeah. Um, did you have a, I mean, what did you order? Did you have a hard time finding that yeah. thing? Like you, it's a conversation that you're supposed yeah. to be having that will within the context will give you a lot of answers mm -hmm. that you, you you want to you know basically against your assumptions. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. So there's a lot yeah. of examples like that. The, the questions, the, the, the wrong questions will get you the wrong customer yeah. input and you think that, oh yeah, you know. And, and actually one more thing that now you mentioned. So you want to ask the customer segment, you want to ask the people who are your early adopters in that customer mm -hmm. segment. So for instance, like if Wuhan never actually ever order food, yeah. then asking him the question of you know, whether or not he'd be interested to order food, whatever, you would say no. And then if you count that as a data point, then you're really, Counting the wrong things. I see. Yeah. So I mean, there, there, it's an art, and um, that's tagged onto your science. Does your workshop will teach teach that? Okay. Yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, we cover a lot of that. And uh, actually, four step to the to epiphany, uh, Steve Banks' book, and uh, Brent Cooper, and uh, PV Patrick Va um, Vaskovich, um, They they're writing a book called The Lean Entrepreneur, and they wrote uh, Entrepreneur's Guide to uh, Customer Development. Those are great resources. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool, Let me mention a little bit about uh, this workshop that these guys are having at the end of August. There are 50 spots, 20 spots have already been taken, say? 27, yeah. 27, so there are 23 <coughs> spots left. If anyone wants to jump on it, you better you know, think oh, about oh, it. Oh, and one question, how much is it? Oh, um, so, well, <laughs> question. Yeah. so early birds unfortunately are sold out. Uh, it's at 250 sing, um, full price. There are some discount codes on E27, on Singapore, uh, SG Entrepreneurs. And the list, if you are on the list, and yeah, we post a link up on the webcam. So, well, but I mean, the truth is, like, we want to do this in KL with KL entrepreneurs, with KL uh, mentors as oh, well. Okay. So, and, and if yeah. you're interested in helping organize, you can go to our website, leanstartermachine.com, and you can unlock your city. There's a button on there, and yeah, we'll contact you. Sweet. No, but just a point about a lean startup. Actually, uh, I actually won't be in Malaysia at that time, but my co-founder, the NES professor, actually oh, yeah. thinks it's worth, he's actually thinking of going for the workshop, by the way. So it's actually, he thinks it's meaningful enough where he'll spend his time from <laughs> August 31st to the 2nd to attend a workshop like that. So it actually has tremendous value, we think. Can I, can I say one more thing? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, this is just the side thing. Uh, all the women, Programmers and designers here. Uh, my girlfriend Maggie and I are actually working on a product uh, that relates to women who work in design and programming. So if you're interested, talk to me or talk to Maggie and we'll exchange. I'm going to there. I'm going to tell you later. Okay. I'm going to go up a bit as well. Uh, <laughs> it's nothing to do with perfume or fashion. There's no perfume involved. I <laughs> well, I know. Yeah. I've got a question for Mark. Uh, could you share with us what you think would be the real world applications for the actual authored reality? Pretty cool question. Uh, yeah. Learning and development. A slide I didn't put up. What happens in the real, excuse me, all, think about it this way. You go for training classes, you go for training and development. How often do you actually apply the stuff that you know? Really? No, yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. right. 
if I have some way, as I said, this is a learning process, no idea how I'm going to do this to some extent. That's why we have to adopt the lean startup approach. What if, if we provide you a way whereby these are the key learning experiences that you care about so that when you're working in the real world, especially if you're working with digital content, we can, it can, the, the background of the professor is facial recognition, which means you can do text recognition. Hmm. And figure out what you're reading and say, these are the business problems that you have. These are the things you care about. It'll remind you, it'll prompt you that maybe you ought to think about these particular problems in a business situation from a business particular business perspective. The example I use for it is Jack Welch, you know, strategy guy, ex CEO of GE. Imagine if you're analyzing a business problem, this is the case. If you can tap into the experience of somebody like that, assuming you structured the case study of the problem well now, so that you're reading it, you're being prompted. This is kind of things that he will ask that you wouldn't have thought about because you don't have the kind of experience that he has. So we are pushing towards a direction, more of prompting you as you read stuff with things that you ought to be thinking about, but you don't remember because it's quite a while ago, but it's actually relevant. The key, f um, we actually have been working with IOI firm in Singapore. IOI traditionally has been about function, to see, right? Corrective. Next step is fashion, be seen. So what's the next step from to see, be seen? We think it's to see like, to see like somebody else. To be able to see a problem like a Jack Walsh, strategy problem like a Jack Walsh. To see a marketing problem like, like I think his name is Al Rees, for example. He might be dead by now. But to be able, so sad. <laughs> but to be able to see a problem, tapping into the expertise of people that you otherwise will not have been able to access. That's the key, to, ab to be able to see like person X, Y, Z. That's where we hit it from. To see, be seen, to see like. Where is Google on this particular framework? The bottom, to see plus, right? Because you're seeing the world, you add on top of it. That's all, it's just a layer. They have the fashion side because they know about it. But I don't know whether they got the top part yet. That's why we think we can complement that. That's why we're headed to at this point. We haven't got the details worked out yet. But that's why I'm excited about this because it's fun, it's new, it's innovative. It's, it's, it's augmentation. It's, it's almost augmentation like... Augmentation of your of, of ideas. So you're basically walking in someone else's shoes. Seeing what they... See, do. the way they think. Not, not, not physically. The way they think versus the way they uh, to some extent the way they walk. No, right? you're right. Google is experimenting with that. They're experimenting, um, right. On their Google search, for example, the way that they're surfacing, like you, you, you type in certain searches, they're already... Predicting. Providing, yeah, predicting. Predicting, and, and, right. And if you apply that to the uh, project I, that, that's, that's kind of like the thing. So it's almost like you're looking at that for a certain amount of time. Maybe you're interested in buying that. I'm going to, you know, uh, overlay more it, information. That's, 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 that's so tracking the history of what you've done for previous yeah, years. Yeah. We're thinking of going, you know, learning experiences at this point. Mm. As I said, it's, it's, it's brand new. It's stuff that I don't know whether anyone else is doing, but that's what we're going to try. It's worth trying, obviously. It's, it's worth yeah, trying, right? If somebody's going to think about what we're going to be wearing in 10 years' time. Oh, uh, we necessarily going to be wearing, <laughs> right? I, I Sign me up. I want my surgery. I, I don't know the answer to the question really, but that's what we're trying it. We're exploring. It's a big idea. Why not? If it's an idea that somebody else has done, I'm not interested. Period. I've, I've done things like this before, and it actually gets me into trouble with IBM. Back in, <laughs> back in 19, uh, late 1990s, I was working on a project for. I, I get done with the stupidest project. Strangest projects, right? <laughs> so I was working with IBM Research. We were doing electronic functions. This is around the time of eBay. <laughs> we developed auction mechanism, we developed auction taxonomy, methodology, the whole nine yards. Everything was there. We had the technology. So I said, can we bring this to market? Um, research at IBM TJ Watson Research Center in uh, <coughs> Midhausen Mid Valley in New York, upper New York. I said, I actually don't know. Because we had to support it, all our systems, you know, IBM systems. How many systems do we have? I have no idea. Number one. Okay? Problem number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, eBay is consumer focus, right? IBM is enterprise. Enterprise. Right. Two big problems. The mindset and the technology platforms we had to support. No clue. So we were actually talking to airlines about yield management systems. <laughs> and the price. We were talking to the French wine auction. Auctioning French wine. French wine auction. Yeah. yeah, over the internet. But all these all enterprises, big companies, you know, kind of like, there's no lean startup approach in this, you know. It has to be a perfect solution when you let it out the door. They are not willing to experiment. 
because the IBM name is associated with it. Yeah. I, I, my regret, I should have taken the technology, gone out and tried it, just for the sheer fun of it. Chicken. <laughs> and that's what you're doing now, obviously. I learned my lesson 10 years later. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a little while, but too late. Never too late. Yeah. Last, last question. question. Last, last question. question. And you grab him later. Yeah. And dig, his, dig, dig this a bit more. Uh, <laughs> what hair? Okay, <laughs> Last question from yes. Uh, question to the lean startup again. Yeah. And, um, what you guys thinking about the startup community, current startup community? Because I uh, came across the people who are just pitching every morning ideas, you know, today to their friends and stuff like that. They start going crazy with all the stuff. And uh, I know my point of view is that the people starting forgetting about the that fun part and that experiment part. They start to be so serious, and they don't have that, you know. Yeah. That that right approach, I think, mean, that right mindset for these things. Yeah. That's going so serious sometimes, and, you know, and maybe that's why this grew up along the way. <laughs> so, what is your question around yeah, like I mean, what do we what's think? What's your thing about the startup uh, current? Uh, that's a pretty hard question. <laughs> it's really broad, I know, you know. It's broad, but and yeah. what like you what startup community? You come across a lot of startups every day, right? So you got some insights how well, I, I guess uh, to take a stab at it, I would say this is the best time to start a startup, right? I mean, web services like AWS is so cheap. Well, not so cheap. Twenty five dollars off of grabs. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, but uh, your options are there. Like you, there are a lot of uh, open source stuff that you can use, and if you want to really run the experiment in the lean way. It's totally affordable. It may be. It may keep you up at one a.m. at night, but with the day job. But you can totally do it. Cost you nothing. So, so I think like almost to answer your question, I feel like this is the time startups community should thrive, and it's okay to pitch a different idea every day and see which one sticks. Right. I mean, that's my personal opinion. I think. I think what he's trying to say is that the first, the, 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 the irritating part of like somebody who's gotten bitten by the bug <clears throat> and they're not really good at public speaking that's why we get people like Mark Lee and Peter coming in to you know level up the game a bit of how to pitch or how to you know uh, I think that's something that they don't teach in schools anymore yeah. read somebody's body language are you still interested in me okay okay <laughs> <laughs> you know that's something that's really solid music. so they end up being more of the insurance agent mentality like, I'm gonna just I'm just gonna canvas all of you fuckers. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. Because right? like, you gotta keep doing and you gotta keep failing and eventually one sucker is gonna bite. And I think that's the that's that, that's the kind of like the wrong type of way to go about it now where where, 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 where it's pushing towards being irritated like the irritation. You know, they, they've lost all these soft skills, the communication skills and stuff. Like so, they never go in after the building, that's true. <laughs> so that's why we end up having more the, the, and, and, that, and that's why uh, what was it Ian was saying? It's time you start investing when the knowledge is is good. You gotta pay for it. You gotta you gotta you know if you're really really interested in being an entrepreneur and learning to pitch better, eventually you reach a point where you need to pay somebody to coach you on how to pitch. And then it's gonna make you money. It's and it's gonna investment. make you money exactly. I mean, Lynda.com is like thirty nine bucks a month or something, and you get thousands of, of different things you could learn. Even right. if yeah. you only do it for one month, you know, it's there's there's so the ratio of what knowledge costs to what you can do with it is is incredible. But, yeah, you know, like like Peter was here last last week, and he and he made an offer like, if anybody want to help me build a website, I'll I'll offer you coaching. You know, how many of you guys? I, I mean, I, 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 most of you were not here, but I don't know how many of you actually like made an offer to say, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll do this for you, and then you teach me coaching. So the opportunity is there. The lean startup guys are here to like do this to you guys and say, come on, like what the fuck, right? Yeah, it's the customer that would yeah. do this to you, yeah. not, not yeah. us. Yeah. We're nice guys. Coach, coach. We'll, we'll hug you when you come back in. Like, <laughs> thank you, thank you to our, our awesome speaker. Hello, they got they got they got a run now, uh, but I will make sure that you can friend them on Facebook and you can like hammer them more and more. Sure. Uh, thank you. Please.